Well, two weeks ago might have been one of my more discouraging weeks. Last week was one of my most encouraging weeks. I'm going to tell you about a tool today that made it all possible that you've heard of, but you didn't realize how well it works. Let's talk about it. No, I didn't just start with that opening because I thought it would be a good follow-up to last week. You know, if it was bad last week, it's good this week. It just makes for good podcasting. That is not the case. In fact, I didn't get the figure out the encouragement until about midweek. I was still discouraged on Monday, but I will tell you why. I want to save the tool for just a moment because... I want to kind of set it up a little bit because you've already heard about it. You know what I'm talking about because you saw the title of the podcast, but let's save its discussion. We're talking about breakout rooms. Let's save the discussion for a little while. Breakout rooms, I will tell you right off though, is one of the best tools that you know about, but for some reason you're not using. In fact, I'll go ahead and say that I'm trying to talk my wife into using it. She's a fifth grade school teacher, and it's I haven't really talked her into it yet. I want to talk you guys into it today by laying out all my reasons, okay? So we're going to talk about that. I'll describe it. I kind of joked with her when I got a, when I started riding a bicycle um, every day about six months ago, I really didn't have a side view mirror. She had ridden a bicycle for years now, and I said, I don't really need a side view mirror. She bought me one anyway, and I used it for a couple of months and loved it, and I didn't realize how much I was going to miss it until I accidentally broke it and had to get another one. And then those few days I had to ride it without that mirror, well, I couldn't hardly stand it because even though I said I would never need one, once I tried it out... I realized how much I couldn't do without it. I think, you know, my goal today is to describe breakout rooms to you in such a way that you'll at least try it and see how you'll never, ever say that I'll never do it again. So that's what our goal is today. This week was continued to be a bit of a strange week for us. We are in Kentucky. We are virtual. I told you last week that... We knew we were going to be virtual at least until Thanksgiving. Well, our our cases of COVID have gone up. By the way, if you're listening to this maybe in a later year, I hope everybody's healthy by then. But this is currently Thanksgiving week in 2020, so that's where we are. And we found out this week, based on our governor's recommendations and our superintendent's recommendations that we will not be going live back into the classroom until after the Christmas break. So we are doing virtual classes. The plan is now we'll come back to in-room classes on January 4th. That is a Monday. So with all that in mind, I can tell you this. I know the kids' reactions. I'll tell you their scores first. They are doing much worse than they did when they were in the classroom. We just can't help them one-on-one. And the talkative ones in the classroom, it's hard to even get them to talk when we're in a virtual environment. I don't know if it's just the inconvenience of clicking to unmute yourself. I'm not really sure what it is, but that situation we, we are you know faced with right now Also, not only the grades and the participation, but I can just tell in the attitudes of the kids. In fact, I really confirmed that this week because one thing I've got my seventh and my seventh grade computer applications classes doing now is recording, editing, and publishing a podcast. They're going to do one individually. And I've already sent out an email to the entire school to try to convince the teachers that these kids would like to interview them for their podcast. And I've got several volunteers, so it's going to be a lot of fun. 
But while we were practicing, I said, all right, guys, I'm going to show you how easy this works. I shared my screen on Zoom. We're using Anchor for this. I don't use Anchor for the podcast I'm talking uh, about right now. We're using Anchor through this for school students, mainly because it's free. You can install it on your phone. In fact, to be honest, the app works better on the phone, I think, than using the website. So, and to be honest, if in the future, if they really want their podcast to take off, Anchor will pay them a penny per download. So, you know, it might be enough in the early phases to get a hamburger every now and then, but I think that's kind of a neat setup that Anchor has. In fact, I'll just say as an aside, it has nothing to do with what we're discussing today, but Spotify now owns Anchor. You can actually legally use music through Spotify in an Anchor podcast, so that's actually pretty encouraging. So a lot of reasons for those kids to be excited about it. But the reason I bring it up, we did a test podcast in which I interviewed some of them just to show it how easy it was. And the two questions I ask are, what makes a substitute teacher good? And of course, they gave the standards of helping us learn while making class fun. That's pretty much the universal answer. But then I ask them, how do you feel about this virtual learning? Are you okay with it? And they, you know, about the only positive thing they had to say was at least they had the comfort of their home. But everybody's saying, my grades are suffering. It's not as motivating. I like it better when there's some one-on-one time. And, you know, all that just leads to me, me to believe that we've got to do something. And now that I know this is all the way through January, That is something I wanted to, I wanted to try something new in my classes, and that's why I just, you know, gave breakout rooms a shot. So, first of all, I will just briefly talk about how you do them, because I want most of the time to be spent in how well it worked and what I found out. You know, I don't know why it took me so long to use them because we actually trained on them a little bit when we first started doing virtual learning. But, you know, I haven't talked to a whole lot of teachers that have used them to the extent that I did this week. And I'm not sure why. I don't know why it's so hard for us to get it in our head that it might be a valuable tool. But basically... There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube about how to use it. The one I found that I thought was the best was about 13 minutes long. It went through the steps, but basically it's as easy as this. In fact, most school systems already have it configured so that it shows up as an icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen when you have it open. Usually it's at the bottom. It depends on what kind of device you're using, really. And technically, you could even do this through the Zoom app on a smartphone. But what happens is you either click your breakout rooms icon, which is at the bottom of the screen, Or you click the three dots, which just continues the menu, and you'll see breakout rooms there. So here's the options open to you. Once you click the breakout rooms, you get a nice... Now, I'll be honest with you. I have a a large monitor since we're zooming a lot now. I have a large monitor. I think it's 19 inches, maybe bigger than that. I I bought it when I was doing some business stuff way back when. So I've actually got my laptop top hooked up to a monitor just because it gives me more room that doesn't really matter but you know it's kind of nice to see the kids smiling faces in fact it's at least that part of it I like I get to see their smiles now Uh, and I didn't get to see that in the classroom because half of their face was covered up so that's kind of an interesting little side that I do like about seeing them on the computer but you basically click the breakout rooms icon at the top at the bottom and you open the window and it will give you options such as assign automatically assign manually and let participants choose the room i haven't tried the last one but i think that will be a fun game to maybe play in the future assign automatically is just what it sounds like you can 
just have Zoom assign kids to certain rooms. Assign manually is a little bit more, I guess, laborious way to do it. But, you know, most of my classes are 15 kids, so I'll do that. And I'll tell you just a moment how I probably spent that much time anyway moving people around. So those are all the different ways. Now, the interesting thing is I have as many as 21 in a a Zoom class at the same time. So you can just kind of guess at how many you want in each room because the first thing it will have you do is create the number of breakout rooms. And I think it will go so large that you could actually create a breakout room for each individual. In fact, if you ever wanted to do some one-on-one work, maybe start them on homework, put them all in a room, each one by themselves, work on your homework, and then pop in later to talk to them. I guess that's a way to use it too. Here's what I did. I put a sign automatically. Now, there were some things I wanted to get accomplished while we were doing this. And in fact, there was one project that I had three particular students in mind. So what I did was I assigned automatically, and then I looked in each of the rooms, and it gives you two options for each participant. You can either just move them to another room. If you click move to, it gives you the all the rooms and a window out to the side, and you just pick a room that you want to move them to. Or if it, it says exchange, if you do that, you click ex- exchange, it will bring up a list of all the students in a room anywhere. You click the student you want to exchange with, and they just swap places. I had something specific I wanted to talk to three students about in one class in a certain room. So I, I had Zoom assign the rooms automatically, and then I went in there, looked for those three kids, and move them so that I'd moved only them so that they were all in a room together and everybody else was in other rooms. So that's basically the way I did it. And it worked out really well. And I think they were a little surprised when I told them what question I wanted them to work on. I actually gave them two questions. In fact, I told them the questions before I sent them to the breakout rooms. And it was kind of cool because I could see kind of the surprise look in their faces. Or, you know, I would see some of the students put their hand over their mouth saying, oh, I can't do that. But let me tell you what they were. Ironically, I had a teacher's meeting shortly after I did this and I was talking about it. And I'll tell you what they said, too. So everybody's going to be a little bit different. But here's the two questions I told them I wanted them to discuss. And mainly, I came up with these questions so they knew that I thought what we were doing, that I thought they were important and what we were doing was important. And I needed to put the two of those together. Their success was important to me. And to basically let them know that I'm there for them Here's the two questions I asked them. First of all, I said, all right, first question, what would make this class better? And I could kind of see their eyes. You know how people get that think face sometime and you can just kind of tell they're contemplating what the answers will be. I did tell them that the first thing I wanted them to do is pick a spokesperson for each room so that we're not all talking at the same time. And then your spokesperson will be the one that shares it with everybody else. So I did that. That was the first question. Second question, after I said, what will make this class better? I said, what would make Mr. Collins better? And then that was the one they reacted to because, you know, I kind of joked with one of the boys that started started smiling, said, I can already tell you're going to look forward to this. But I was honest with them, and not everybody is this way. Not every teacher I've run into is this way. But I said, guys, I don't get my feelings hurt. You can say anything, as long as it's productive, as long as it's something I can work on to improve. You can say anything to me you want to. I want that to be open. And they just kind of smiled. So I said, all right, here we go. I'm getting ready to click the button, send you to your breakout rooms. You're going to have 10 minutes. I'm going to pop into your room after about five minutes to see if you need anything and to see if everything's going well. So 
Basically, from a logistic standpoint, you then click open all rooms and there they go. They're on their way. You can see them. It depends on internet connection, but you'll see some of them pop off of your screen soon. And then finally, the last one will pop off. They basically get a, a bubble on their end. They have to click the bubble to be assigned to the room. And that, they'll all do that pretty quick. So that's what I did. You Once you send them to the rooms, you can actually, or even before you send them to the to the rooms, you can actually click a button called Recreate. If you've got them all in a room, assigned to a room, by the way, this window that pops up when you're doing this, you're the only one that can see that, only the host. If you had a co-host, they could probably see it. But there are two other buttons other than Open All Rooms. They are Recreate. So you could click Recreate and just start from scratch. It's like randomizing all the rooms all over again and then you can also add a room when you add a room it basically is just what it sounds like if you start it with four rooms and you decide you know this would have worked better with five you can add a room then maybe go back to recreate to move people to five rooms and then finally you've got options where you can click as i mentioned allow participants to choose the room you could allow participants to return to the main session at any time. You can automatically move all assigned participants into the break rooms. And one thing I want to mention, when you're finished with your break rooms and you close the rooms and have everybody rejoin, what will happen in their room, they'll see a 60-second countdown timer. Now, that's the default. You can make it less than that, more than that. When you click the button to rejoin the main room, they have 60 seconds to finish what they're discussing. They can actually rejoin the room as soon as they want to. You also have a feature. I'm not sure when I would use this. Possibly. It's called Breakout Rooms Close Automatically. After it defaults to 30 minutes, you could change that to anything. So if you're sending them off on a discussion and you get tied up, it might be good to click that if you really didn't want to spend more than them to spend more than 30 minutes in the room. So that's basically the way it goes. Now let's talk about those topics. I popped in on the rooms, and guys, I'm telling you, not only, you know, I, I talked about the kids that talk all the time in the classroom, but then wouldn't talk very much virtually, you know, and I can even see the expression on their faces. Some of the kids that just laugh all the time in their classroom, they're just, you know, they're more solemn when they're virtual. I don't know what it is because they're not shy about talking in front of the other students in the classroom. Not sure why they'd be shy about talking to each other virtually as well. It's not that difficult, but that's what I was faced with. And I noticed when we went into these break rooms, each time that I popped on in there, they were talking, they were laughing. And all of a sudden, only because I broke them down into smaller groups, they were talking more. And I'll even go so far as to say this, the ones that don't talk in the classroom in front of the others, they were actually discussing things in these smaller groups. I shot for about, I think the most I had in any group at any one time was five. Most of them were four. But they talked about that. I gave them 10 minutes. I popped in and said, all right, guys, what do you need? They have the ability, by the way, anytime they want to, to click and say they need help from the host. You will see a pop-up when that happens. You just go to your room. In fact, one student did that within 30 seconds. And uh, I went in there and said, boy, that was quick. What do you need already? And they said, and you're, this last question is for real? You really want us to tell you what what we think make Mr. Collins better? I said, sure I do. So I popped back out. We got back together in 10 minutes. And you know, it's funny. Most every class that I did this with, most of the rooms came up with the same type of, of answers. And none of them were mean. You're not going to say, you know, I didn't get any of the messages that Mr. Collins, we just don't think we're learning anything in here. I didn't get any of that. Here's what I got. Now, I will say, I've, I discussed this with teachers, and one teacher who is one of the best teachers I've ever met said she got her heart broken one time. Uh, I get a lot of material from her and a lot of help, 
And she said, because one student said that when she asked them, what can I do for you? And the student answered, just teach us more or teach us better or something to that effect. And it broke her heart because I can't imagine any student ever saying that because she's a great teacher. But here we go. Here's the answers. The first one, of course, was what to make the class better. And since I have them in seating charts and they have masks on, the two most popular were more mask breaks. We're meeting for an hour and a half. And sometimes I don't have a mask break at all because I'm concerned we're not going to get through the material. Most of the time I have a break after about 30 minutes. And they said more mass breaks. So I think they even mean, even if it occupies the same amount of time totally, let's just go outside more often and have a reason to get out of our mask. And so I've decided, I told him I'm going to implement that. We'll do it one after 20 minutes. We'll do one after maybe another 30 minutes and kind of break things up. And they appreciated that. The other thing was as far as making the class better, some of them thought maybe they, they're they okay with seating charts, but kind of change the seating charts. They weren't even saying, we're not, you know, the, the students weren't saying, let us set where we want to. They were just saying, change the seating chart every now and then. Let's get some fresh faces around us. As much as I like the students I'm setting around, I don't know if I want to set around them the entire year. So I put both of those into place. Now, here's what they mainly said about Mr. Collins. And you are going to laugh when you hear this, and you're going to think to yourself, I can sure see that. I can tell that just from this podcast. Two things. They both were about talking Yes, they think I talk too much. And they all laughed when they said that. But then the more productive version of that was, I laughed when they said it because I knew they were right. They said, we would like for you to slow down when you're presenting notes to us to make sure that we have all the notes down. You know, that's another big change for in classroom. In the classroom, they would just tell me that. Mr. Collins, could you wait just a moment while I get the rest of those notes written down? They don't talk to me as much virtually. And I'll be I'll be honest, I've gotten into a bad habit of if I think I've got to get so much accomplished today, I talk really fast. And I over-assume that because I know what I'm talking about, that they understand that. So guys, that was two of the most productive comments I could have ever gotten. I am going to try my best to slow down. And you know, they were they were basically saying, we'll learn better if you go a little slower and not only, you know, slow down, don't talk as fast, give us time to ask questions, all that good stuff. One other comment, which I like during the virtual, is I had my classes meeting at 8 o'clock. So one of them said, what if we went to 8.30 cause, or started at 8.30? Usually I wasn't keeping them the whole time anyway, and I thought that was a great idea. So we moved one class to 8.30. We still met for over an hour, but they got out a little bit later rather than spending the same amount of time, but starting earlier. So those were great, great comments. And the thing that happened most, it wasn't those comments, what I considered the most productive. It was the fact that all of a sudden I have those students talking again. They're discussing again. I saw the smiles come back on their faces. Even the ones that were a little disgruntled with maybe recent test scores or assignments, we have we just naturally have a hard time getting them to turn in assignments on time. And that's one thing that we're working towards too. Now, I'm blessed in that regard. I have several classes that do real well with that. So I'm not going to complain too much. But guys, that was basically what we did we use those breakout rooms, and here's here's what I will close with. Don't think about break rooms. Oh, that's just that much more work I have to do. I have to pop out on each one of them. Think about those kids, and when you do it once, you realize how much more they're talking. Some of the break room breakout rooms I popped into, all of a sudden, I heard kids talking while I joined it that I don't know if I ever heard talk in the classroom before unless I asked them a direct question. So they did real well with that. They knew what their goals were, and they improved on those and described them to me. So guys, 
Go out there and try those break rooms. I guarantee you're going to love the fact that you did, okay? So everybody go out and try the breakout rooms. It's just like eating potato chips. Once you do it once, you'll want to do it again. Now, let me tell you this in closing. There is also breakout type rooms in, you know, those of you that are those of you that are using Google Meets. I would love for you to tell me about those. In fact, if you want me to interview you and include you on the podcast, remember you can email me at gregcollinssubstitute at gmail.com. You can go to our Substitute Teachers Lounge Facebook page and do it that way as well. So the goal of this week, go out and try those breakout rooms. We've only It's Thanksgiving week. We've only got two days we're meeting this week you're probably in the same situation give it a try just use it for five minutes if you don't want to use it too long i would describe it the day i used it as the most productive thing we did in that class that day and i think you'll find out the same thing so we're zooming there's a lot of us all doing the same thing now we don't like being virtual but we got to do it so we might as well make the best of it Use your Zoom breakout rooms, and I think you'll really be glad that you did, all right? I will see you next week on Substitute Teacher's Lounge. Music provided by Ben Sound.